Hello, folks. Well, I've got the computer schematic up here for the uh, Philips uh, BX640A radio. Um, I want to fuse this. Now, uh, here's the power switch over here. And apparently it switches both the neutral and the hot. Now, on this radio, it has a nice, flexible, very good condition non-polarized rubber cord appears to be rubber it's really really nice so i don't want to change it to a three-prong cord so what i'm going to do here i think is put a one amp fuse in each leg here and maybe under the chassis um so that's probably what i'll do the radio draws about a little over 700 mils at the most. So a one amp quick blow should be okay. I've been looking on the forums, uh, on other forums, not the antique radio forum, but other forums. Uh, and uh, it appears to be that uh, when you have uh, a switch such as this, uh, it's recommended to have a fuse in each leg. Uh, because if you have that plug, which is non-polarized, plugged into the opposite way, um, <clears throat> you could end up with fusing the neutral, and uh, although it would still probably protect if it blows, you still are not disconnected from the line for safety reasons. Even though they're set for obvious observations here, the radio has a power transformer, and uh, I think the easy 84s I have to look them up. I think they are. They're in parallel, direct to fire tubes, uh, pins 1 and 7 on each of these uh, are tied together. So they're actually, uh, one tube is rectifying half the wave, and the other is rectifying the other half. So uh, I've got uh, two new tubes in here now. So that's what I'll probably do. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to pull that chassis out because um, there's working in the area under the cabinet where the inspection covers come off that I showed you. Uh, I can get at a lot of this stuff, but... I'm not going to be able to get at the audio output tube, which I, uh, there's two 6BQ5s in this set. There's one here, and i got to scroll the schematic up, and there's another one. There's apparently two uh, audio output transformers. Let me uh, scroll down. There's the other one. Okay. Uh, B9. These are six... BQ5s, and those black capacitors didn't, I sh did show you on the video, yeah, on the last video I made on that radio, um, <clears throat> this looks like C73, as close as I can tell, so I can look it up on a parts list, because I've got, I'm looking at the service manual uh, the English version, which I have, and I also have it printed out in my shop. Uh, so I got to look that value up, and it's obviously one of them black, hard cased, stubby fat capacitors, of which there were seven or eight of them in there. So you got two audio output transformers. You got one here and one here. It's not stereo. One is the mid range, I'm not sure which one, and the other is the woofer. All right, now. These resistors here are 53, I mean, yeah, R53 and R52. These here are 1,000 ohm resistors, and I checked, and they're pretty much on. They're about 970 ohms. So they were pretty close to 1,000. Okay, so we got a coupling capacitor right here, okay? So I got to look the value up in that. I don't think it's a point one. Uh, to my surprise, the way this radio sounds so really good, usually they use like a point one coupling capacitor to pass a lot of bass, but this thing here, 
Uh, I don't think there's a capacitor in this thing, other than the electrolytics, that are even as high as 0.1, but I could be wrong. I got the list in the shop. But what's puzzling is, on your second 6BQ5, which is B6 here, is here's your 1,000 ohm resistor. Then you've got a cap here, which I'd have to look it up. at C84. It goes to ground, so that is not a coupling capacitor, and uh, the resistor sh shunts that out, okay? So, I do not see a coupling capacitor to block the DC on the grid of this, the B6, 6BQ5. I do not see it. I do see it on B9, this 6BQ5, C73. So let's take a look at C73 on the parts list. Here is C73. Only 680 picofarads? Now, that might be the mid-range coupling capacitor, in which case that's understandable, but I'd have to look because this decimal point left and right and sideways and up and down, <laughs> I cannot get it. I got, a, I got it written down in the shop. I have all these capacitors written down on a piece of paper, but it's in the shop. Now, the one below that is 47,000 picofarads. So if you're talking about decimal point, that would be point zero 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 four seven right? But that's C74. We're talking about C73. 680 picofarads. There's C73. 680 picofarads? There's your resistor. That's 1,000 ohms. Here's pin 2 of 6BQ5, which is the grid. Pin 7 is the plate. Goes over and to the output transformer, but I'm not sure if that's the base, mid range, or what. It's S45, and this is S39. I don't know why they would list them as S. Usually transformers would be T, but this is uh, this is a Dutch radio, so you know nothing standard. All right, this is your other six BQ5. This is is your plate, all right? It goes to its output transformer and to either the woofer or the uh, mid-range. I really don't know. I'd have to, I would have to look at the parts list to see what that is, okay? But what bothers me is there's no coupling capacitor. So, direct coupled? Certainly looks it, doesn't it? Okay, now here is something that's very strange that I discovered. This is a potentiometer here. I really don't know what that potentiometer is. I'd have to go looking it up on the parts list. But you got a, a tap off of here that goes to ground, okay? You look at this low side of this potentiometer. Look at the high side. What do you see? I see a direct short right across here. How can that thing possibly work? Normally, when there's a circuit change, or some models would have it, they'd have a little dot, dotted line going all across here. All right? That's not the case. And this whole sucker is, <laughs> is <laughs> shorted out. So you got a direct feed... from SKU, whatever that is, but it seems to end at the dotted line up here. Let me, uh, let's not jump the gun here. Let's see where, get, find my mouse pointer here. Nope. It ends at the, at the dotted line, which goes around the radio here. See it? 
So that ends right there. There's no uh, terminal identification here, and you got this dotted line that goes right around. So this is this is not an easy circuit or schematic to work from because it's it's not standard. Not too bad with the tube symbols, although I'm not used to looking at a cathode that's curved like a sad face, but uh, <laughs> but that's the way they draw them. But it's quite easy to identify. That's your 6BQ5. It's a 9-pin tube. Pins 4 and 5 of the filament. Pins 4 and 5 of the filament. Okay. All right, so it's direct coupled. So that's a mystery right there, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that. What I am trying to identify, this particular capacitor is 680 picofarads. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm choking up here. I choke up very easy for every little thing. Lately, I've been choking the last few years. <coughs> for no reason at all. I can be talking and I'm choking them, choking to death. My mom was the same way. Um, 680 picofarads is one of those stubby, black, hard case capacitors, which uh, George Kostopi told me are uh, waxies, black waxies, okay? <clears throat> but that capacitor is not marked on, on it. I looked again on the radio. I gently cleaned them with a cloth and a little water. And some of them have those oddball numbers on them, letters mostly, uh, but no capacity ratings on them. So I'm trying to trace out the circuit. So I have no problem finding this cap, although this radio is going to be a dog working on because it's very cramped. So I may not attempt to get all the capacitors. I'll do what I can. Uh, but the radio's working. I'm tempted to leave it alone except for fusing it. But i got to get the chassis out in order to put the double fuses in there. And I'm going to have to order a, um, a two of those chassis-mounted uh, type of fuse holders, not the screw and push and twist like I was going to do, uh, but the single ones. And i got to find a place under the chassis uh, if there's room. If not, I can't do it on top. I'll have to fuse one side of the line, and that's not what I want to do. And I don't want to put a polarized plug on that. This radio has got a beautiful cord on it, and I want to keep it that way. Um, so, that's where we're at now. But this thing here has got me puzzled. But we're not going to worry about it. I just spotted it, and I thought I'd tell you about it. And also mention that um, I think this is probably DC coupled, in which case this most likely is the woofer channel. B7 and B11 are 6V3s, or EZ84s if I'm not mistaken, but don't quote me. I got that written down on the manual in my shop. I'm in the house now. Your electrolytics, C1, A, B, C2, C1, and C3, are 50 microfarads. Judging from the voltages here, and I have not looked on the CAN capacitor because I have to pull the chassis because it... The information is on the other side where I can't see it. Apparently, it's uh, 246 volts. So based on that, I would say this cap is rated at 350 volts, which is what I will put in it. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to be humming at all, uh, but it reads... When I put my ESR meter across each one of these, it read... Four, uh, four ohms. In other words, it's a high um, ESR. Everything's fine with the minivan. I mean, uh, went out today, and so far, unless I get a report that it stopped, 
it's um, going to be about 40 today, and my wife don't run the heat. She actually gets uh, to where she has to put the uh, cool air on, not the AC. So, anyways, if that stays working, um, that's fine. Um, after running it this morning, I popped the cover, and on the back of my hand, I touched the relay, the blower relay. It's lukewarm. The others are cold, but one other big relay in there is lukewarm also, very, very slightly. So um, that might be normal. But I have not had any problems. Knock on wood. So that's it, folks. I just figured I'd throw this video up here. I did a little work yesterday, but I did not remove those caps because uh, all of them, with the exception of two, are not marked. So I got a lot of tracing out to do when it's a very hard chassis to trace out. I'm going to have to pull it out and I'm, I just hope I don't break anything.